Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curates. We're in Norwood, Massachusetts. Uh, my name is Keith McKinnon, and I am uh, uh, with uh, worshipful Trevor Humphrey from Japatchet, Rhode Island, from Friendship Lodge, number seven. Uh, Trevor was nice enough to come up, as I had mentioned in the previous episode, to talk about a couple of the episodes that we weren't able to cover while we were in Japatchet. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the, the building and the bank. Yes. And um, again, guys, as I mentioned at the video in Japatchi, before you die, okay, you have to visit both Warren, Rhode Island and Japatchi, Rhode Island. They're a must, both of them. Uh, both of them are phenomenal buildings. Uh, Japatchi not only has a great history with the lodge and the building, but also um, the, the two things that we discussed, the Elephant Bridge and the Door Rebellion that happened right outside. Right. And as I, I think I may have mentioned, if you do go down to the lodge, make sure you stop off at the Tavern on Main Street, or is the Main Street Tavern? Tavern on Main. Tavern on Main. Uh, go in, uh, belly up to the bar, and have a drink, and maybe you might sit at the same chair where that young lady was shot by her husband and killed. Because that's one of the ghosts, I believe, that haunt the, the inn. That's one of the stories. Um, but in any case, we're not talking about the ghosts in the, in the tap. We're talking about the building at Japatchi. Now, what I understand is your lodge was found, formed in 1800. You met at the tavern, like many Masonic lodges did. But the building was not originally Masonic. Um, it was something totally different. And then you guys came in at a later point. Can you... Uh, well, so not quite. Um... So yes, when we when we were first meeting, uh, Friendship Lodge met at the tavern. Um, it would occasionally meet a few other locations, but the tavern was the main one. And then in uh, 1803, they started building a bank, uh, what is now essentially right next door. And when the bank was being built, we commissioned to build a second floor, and that was going to be the new locate and permanent location of Friendship Lodge. Um, so yeah, right around. Uh, 1803, 1804 is when we moved into that building. The first floor was uh, the bank for the town of Japatchet. It was the Farmers Union Bank, or Farmers Exchange Bank, sorry. Now, most worshipful did give a little bit of a talk about it. Okay. Uh, that's in one of the episodes. Um, of course, I've straightened out what the fresh water lodge meant. I thought it was because you had a running well in the basement. We but do. of course, we do have a running well in the basement <laughs> that supplies water still to the building to this day. Yes. Uh, but there's also something else that's in the basement that's a rather unusual feature. We will have a picture of, what do you call it, the access? I guess the access hall. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting thing and it kind of, I mean, we'll get more into the bank, obviously, but it, it kind of speaks volumes to... Uh, to the bank itself and who exactly was running it when you think about this vault. Because in the corner of... Uh, it's in the southeast corner of the lodge in the basement is a stone separate foundation that was the original vault for the Farmers Exchange Bank. And... Uh, so, I'm sorry, there was no metal vault? So again, that's the strange part, is that metal vaults did exist, they had safes, they had, but that's not what this bank decided to go with. And we have, um, the top is a, I mean, the top of the vault is a beautiful piece of solid stone, and it has an opening where they would lower um, just the keyhole piece to cover it. And the thought was that, oh, if anybody wanted to come in and rob us, they'd have to set up this pulley system and lift this heavy stone out of the way. And uh, you can even see on the, the side of the hole, there's two uh, smaller holes, and that's actually where the pulley system was put in. So anything that they had for um, exchanges for the day, they would actually lower with a bucket down into the vault at night and then cover it with the stone. Who is in the hole? <laughs> So, again, it doesn't seem like a very sensible solution. On, on the surface, yeah, you're probably keeping things safe, but anybody with a pulley and rope or enough strong men or a horse could probably lift the cave, you know, lift the top right off of that vault and get everything inside. 
It puts the coins in the basket. All right, so in your building, there's still a couple. Of, I know your building has had some renovations over the years, yes. but the main door, the front door, is still the original door from 1803, I believe, because it still has that lock on it. Well, so that's in the middle of the door. We, we should specify not not the main doors and the main door that we use. Right. But the main door that was used uh, originally for the lodge is still the uh, door that faces Main Street, which you could get into the lodge by climbing yep. the stairs, or into the bank, which you walk straight ahead. No, that no, that door only led upstairs. Oh. So the the wall was continued. Okay. Uh, now, and part of the uh, confusion is now we've we've changed it. That door is sealed off, and the stairs come down into our dining room, which is where the bank used to be. Okay. Um, so the bank had the whole first floor. Then. Yes. Uh, you have a sitting room, bathrooms, kitchen, and a, ba- a small bank hall. So that was the bank. Yes. Okay. Um, can you tell me something about the bank? Um, you told me an interesting story that it was the first it bank was to belly up. The first U.S. bank to close and and to um, forfeit on all of its loans. It was the first bank in the U.S. to fail, and. It failed amazingly in about five years. But th- uh, this is also the same time that your lodge is meeting upstairs. Yes. That the bank is failing. <laughs> yes. Um, so luckily, outside of physical address, we did not share anything with the bank. So this this is, does not really tie back to us. But uh, the gentleman that founded the bank and founded it with several others, um, by all reports, they had no business in banking. Uh, their books were never kept clean. They, um, it was hard to keep for them to keep records of who they were loaning money to. Um, they were printing more money than they could because at the time there was not a centralized currency. So every bank had their own promissory notes. And so they were printing um, their own money at an extent that they were over lending themselves. Um, and in just four years, the entire board of, of the original trustees, uh, all but about two of them had sold off all of their shares to the bank because they saw this is not going the way that it should. And um, yeah, they all sold their shares of the bank and it was left to the two original founding members. And eventually the state of Rhode Island came in and said, you guys clearly are over lending and we need to shut this down. Um, now you're gonna have some uh, of the money uh, a three dollar bill and a five dollar bill. Yes, we have. Uh, that we'll we'll put on. Um, and these bank they're called bank notes. They're not called money. The bank notes. Uh, yes, a number of banks um, were allowed to print their own money as long as they had a- assets to to back it up. Like we print money today, but it's backed up on a gold thing. Banks are supposed to have the same thing. They're supposed to have the money. For the money that they print or right, give away. Right. They, they need a certain amount of capital to be able to be right. lending. And I, I should also point out that it's not that the, you know, you can't just print, you know, it's, it's not that a, one $5 bill is different from another $5 bill. There was a general understanding of what a dollar meant. Mm-hmm. So it had its value tied to a dollar, but there was not a centralized, like, not all the bills looked the same. So the ones from Japachet would say, uh, Farmers Exchange Bank, mm-hmm. Japachet, and they would actually be signed by the bankers. And it was the bankers' responsibility to use that as a promissory note, stating that they had the money to cover that capital. Now, when you told me the story, I did, again, I did a little minor research, and we got to cut it kind of quick here because um, uh, we do have a, many other episodes to cover today. Um, but I did a little quick research. Um, yeah, I think one or two commissions were appointed by the state legislature to look into the bank. Yes. Um, one of them came back and said, yeah, they, they as I mentioned to you earlier, yeah, they printed $15,000 worth of money, but only had $93 in assets, <laughs> was one of them. Um, I don't know if it was the same report from the commissioners or not, but as I mentioned to you uh, when we were down at Chapachet, um, they actually mentioned in the report the stone vault. And and what a weird way to secure to, your to money. To try to keep money safe. To put it in yeah. a basement in a stone vault. Uh, I thought that was kind of fascinating. That actually, that actually made a commissioner's 
du poids. Yeah, it, it truly, when you first look at it, you think of it as like, this is a very stone age, and yeah, you know, 1804, maybe this is how we kept money safe. But no, we, we had safes. We <laughs> just... <laughs> so, the bank owned the building, yes? Yes. Or it was a dual, dual ownership? Uh, I believe it was a dual ownership. Okay. So the bank went belly up in... 1809. 1809. First bank in the U.S. to go belly up. Um, um, I presume today that if you do find bank notes from that, they're probably worth a few bucks. They're worth quite a bit. Um, in, in my recent research, uh, I knew about the $3 bills, so I, I wanted to find one of those, and I, I shared... Uh, that with you guys, but we also we at um, Friendship Lodge, we do have one of their five dollar notes, and uh, the three dollar note that I was looking at, I mean, the rough, rough shape, uh, but was still going for roughly two hundred dollars. Two hundred bucks. Yeah. So. Um, and the bank goes out in eighteen oh nine. You guys took over the building, bought the building. We did eventually. Um, it's. Again, it's one of those areas that the history is a little shaky because that first floor was a lot of things at a lot of different points in time. Um, I know for a fact it was the post office for a little while, um, but it, I don't have those dates tracked down yet. Um, but yes, at, at a certain point, we did wind up taking over the full building, and uh, you know, we've but we've been in that building since it was built, and uh, that's one of the you know our great prides is. Uh, you know, we're sitting this this one here today, which was 1916, I believe I saw it on the cornerstone. And it's always good to be in a new building. <laughs> um, anything else you want to bring about the, the bank? Uh, no, that's it. So, if you guys go to Chapachip, uh, seek out Trevor. Full of information. Great guy. Uh, another thing is he's young, energetic. That's what we need in today's Freemasonry to keep the history going and alive pass it down to others but seek out Trevor uh, if you're real nice um, he'll take you into the kitchen he'll lift up the metal plate that's on the floor and he'll show you the hole in the vault and where they drop the money down yep. <laughs> every night and if you're not nice we'll push you in yeah. <laughs> um, so with that again local Masonic history uh, a fascinating story about the Chapachet Masonic building that if I went and visited there, I, I probably wouldn't know that there was a bank there with a, I was going to say friggin' but I can't, uh, with a, a stone vault in the basement with the cover to it, the first bank to basically go out of business in yeah. the United States. Um, fascinating story. Um, our buildings are filled with, with stuff like that. So, you know, get out there and do some research, guys. Um, your buildings and your land and, and the community, they have a lot of history. So promote it, find it, research it. With that, don't forget, thumbs up. Uh, hit that re uh, subscribe button. Please follow us on Facebook. And above all, if you don't want to do the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button or follow us on Facebook. Pass the word about Masonic Curious. Uh, We've got people now posting on their Facebook pages, on their large Facebook pages. We thank you very much for the uh, Grand Chapter of Pennsylvania for posting a couple of our uh, videos and postings on their website. If you find something of interest, feel free to, to post it. With that, Trevor, I can't thank you enough thank for you. coming up here, finishing off this series, um, and and. We hope at some point in time we can get back down to Chapachi to, to do some more history because there's so much there. You guys are always welcome. Thank you very much. With that, thank you.